In this pleasantly undulating countryside of South Northamptonshire are 50 villages and hamlets where on any school day morning through the year this scene could be witnessed. These pupils are bound for Toaster Grammar School which has been providing education for children in the area for over 500 years. And in this film, an attempt will be made to show some of the school's history, present curriculum, sporting and other activities. A visitor entering the main door of the school will see the date 1430 cut in the stonework. To discover the origins of this, we must go to the parish church, and there we will find the tomb of our pious founder, William Spon. This man was made Archdeacon of Norfolk in 1419 and founded a preach and teach chantry and toaster. In his will he left money to appoint two chaplains to pray for his soul. In time one of these chaplains took responsibility for the education of certain boys from toaster and later bequest to Spons Charity extended the area to which it provided education. The chantry house on the square near the town hall was used as the school for over 300 years. There were rarely more than 20 or so pupils, all boys and some, some of them boarders. The school's fortunes fluctuated, and at one time, near the end of the last century, it was closed for a while. But as county councils took over more responsibility for education, the school was re-established on, on a new footing, and then in 1920 became co-educational. By now it was in premises in Brackley Road, but these were burnt down in 1922, and while the school was being rebuilt, Masters and pupils had to find rooms where they could in the town. These new buildings were opened in 1927 and consisted of two quadrangles either side a central hall. In 1949, a new woodwork shop was added. Then in 1959, a new block to the east of the school provided accommodation for domestic science and a chemistry laboratory. Then in 1963, work started on the biggest addition to the school, a new assembly hall gymnasium with up-to-date changing facilities for sport. In 1964. Gradually the building took shape and was opened in the spring of 1964.
It has a fine stage which has given an encouraging fillip to dramatic presentations by the school. The carved oak table and matching chairs were given by a recent chairman of the governors and the old Tercestrians. Now that the old hall was no longer required, its platform and gymnasium fittings were ripped out. The whole was furnished as an up-to-date library with a fully catalogued 6,000 books and room for as many again. The Honours Board, presented by the Parents' Association, retains its dominating position and is evidence of successes in recent years. The curriculum of the school contains all the subjects associated with an academic education and also many practical and artistic studies. Here you can see a French lesson in progress using one of the most recent visual aids, an 800E projector, to stimulate interest in composition and oral work. On the art side too, English language and literature, Latin and German, religious knowledge and history are all studied, leading to the GCE O-level and A-level examinations. On the science side, mathematics, chemistry, physics, biology and zoology all have a place on the curriculum. At the moment there are three large laboratories and one small one. And there are plans in the 1967 building program for a new science block to be built at the west of the school. These pictures are of a group of six form chemists working by themselves on an afternoon devoted to practical work. Geographical studies give scope for outdoor practical work. These juniors are taking readings from the Stevenson screen for weather recording purposes. and these seniors are having practice in surveying techniques.
On the practical side, the boys study woodwork and geometrical and mechanical drawing, both to GCE standard. Here is a group of fourth form boys in the workshop, a building also due to be replaced in 1967. The girls, meanwhile, take domestic science studies and learn cookery and needlework to O and A level. Later in the film we shall see some of their school-made dresses. Study in the library and use of its facilities is actively encouraged. The regular borrowing of books on a wide range of subjects is an important aspect of learning closely related to all subjects. The artistic side of school life centers around art and music. Here is an art group on an outdoor sketching expedition. And this recorder group plays at school assembly each week. School visits to historic places of interest, theatres and industrial concerns help to give the school timetable more relevance and introduce many pupils to aspects of life remote from their everyday experience. This mock election, at the time of the general election, was organised by the Current Affairs Society to be as like the real thing as possible. This society is just one of the many societies of the school, ranging over recreational, artistic, religious, scientific, cultural and sporting activities. Because this school covers such a wide area, there is much dependence on school buses, and so a number of the clubs must function at dinner time.
but with the help of parents and cycles, many pupils find it possible to stay after 4 p.m. to take advantage of facilities arranged for them. Every Easter, a field week is arranged as an integral part of geographical and geogra geological studies. These pictures show pupils in the Lake District and the Isle of Purbeck. Pupils studying languages often make exchange visits abroad during this period to improve their knowledge. To weave all these strands in the curriculum into a fabric suited to the abilities of each pupil, everyone has regular interviews with the headmaster, who gives advice and guidance on subject options, and later the choice of careers. Following this advice, many pupils now continue with a sixth form education, as the opportunities in better paid jobs are only open to those with more advanced qualifications. In this connection, the headmaster is always willing to see parents about any mutual problems they may have. And would be grateful if they would arrange with the secretary for a convenient time for a meeting. We cannot close this section on the curriculum in the school without a glimpse of the GCE exams, the culmination of five or seven years' endeavour. Now for a quick glimpse at some of the sporting activities in the school, most of which are self-explanatory. Cricket is the main game played by boys in the summer. And here the Mayor's Cup for Cricket is being presented by the donor. On the girls' side, Summer finds them engaged in rounders and tennis. In the gymnasium, exercises performed to music, as in this giant sunflower, lead to physical fitness. On the athletics scene, this is a visit from Gordon Pirrie, 
giving advice and encouragement. Later, in athletics matches and on sports day, house championships cups are battled for. The school has its own open air swimming pool with a chlorination and filtration plant. This is an inter-house basketball match, very popular with the boys during the winter. And perhaps not so popular, the annual cross-country championships a real test of fitness and stamina. During the winter, the girls play netball and hockey and manage to turn out very creditable teams on Saturdays to challenge opposing schools. And the boys' winter game is rugby, not often as painful as it looks. This game can give even the most awkward boy an enjoyable afternoon, and even if he knows he's not a polished performer, he can have the satisfaction of being an honest trier. Each year the Dramatic Society puts on a school play and these pictures taken during rehearsal 
show the high standards achieved. Before the building of the new hall, performances had to take place in the town hall or at the secondary school. But now we have a well-equipped stage and dressing rooms, productions can be arranged with much better facilities for rehearsal. The Eisteddfod Shield is competed for annually by pupils in the lower school. It covers a wide range of cultural and practical subjects and the competitors are given advice and encouragement by the judges. These competitions give pupils the chance to perform some of their talents to an audience and are very useful for the confidence they instill. Here are some of the entries on the practical side.
the end of every summer term, the Parents' Association hold a fete on the school grounds. This, like its other activities throughout the year, aims at providing amusement and raising cash, which is then donated to the school for the purchase of items not normally supplied by the Education Committee. Such items have been sets of encyclopedias for the library, a motor roller for the school field, and a projector and cine camera which took this film. School versus parents cricket and tennis matches are regular features of the fete. The mannequin parade of dresses made by the girls themselves is always popular. Every year finds masters and mistresses giving up their time to organize holidays abroad so that pupils can familiarize themselves with foreign culture and manners and appreciate the beauty of the scenery. Prize Day important days in the school calendar. On this day, academic awards are presented, progress prizes are given to those who have worked well during the year, and the house cups and shields for work and sport are presented to the house captains.
Then every May the school gathers together to go to the parish church where the school bell ringers are already busy calling them to remembrance of the school's founder, William Spon, and its other benefactors. Five hundred years enduring, from age to following age. Yes, the school has endured, and adapted itself to many changes over this period, and as an educational establishment, hopes it can justifiably claim credit for the pupils it turns out. But perhaps the greatest changes are to come, and the school looks forward with renewed vigour to the challenge of new ideas and experiments in education. It also looks forward with the hope that the worthwhile features that have evolved over the centuries can be retained and fused together with the new ideas to make a strong system of education for this area in the future.